So prior to coming to Penn State, I had um, already pretty much thought that I had wanted to do business as kind of my profession. My father was an entrepreneur of his own um, engineering company. I had taken a semester off of school and done a co-op, so I had a little bit of money. And so I bought a truck. Someone stole a tree stand out of the bed of my truck. So I started looking at getting covers. At the time, the only cover options were really like a vinyl tarp or a painted fiberglass. I first met uh, Ethan and Matt in the fall of 2002. They were students in a class I teach, ENGR 407, Technology-Based Entrepreneurship, which is all about starting new businesses and coming up with new ideas and working in teams to do that. The first time I met Matt, um, it was clear that he thought different than almost everybody in the class. Um, Matt was an incredibly creative person and had the attitude that he could make and fix pretty much anything. And he was looking for a cover that would give him the ability to seal and lock his bed, but still let him do some other things with the truck. So being the kind of person he is, he just figured he'd make one himself. So at the last minute, I threw together this plan. I took everybody down out to the parking lot and I stood up on my truck bed cover and I ran it and raved. And Bob thought my presentation was horrible, and it was, and so he failed me for the presentation. Ethan recognized the cover and thought the cover was a good idea. We decided to uh, do the class project on his cover, and we called it the Diamondback Truck Cover. Spent a couple weeks um, producing financials, you know, wildly incorrect financials and other kinds of projections on how we were going to bring the product to market. Then pitched it to the class and we ended up winning the class. I think a lot of us instantly saw that there was a chance for success with this thing. We ended up winning best product overall at the Design Expo. And that really kind of jump-started our brains and kind of thinking about, okay, how would we do this? How would we actually bring this product to market? I was ready to graduate. I had no job offers and no prospects whatsoever. I was always preaching that when there's an opportunity in the marketplace, you must take advantage of it. You can't necessarily wait until you graduate or feel like you're ready. Looking back on the decision to drop out of school, um, at the time it just felt sort of like the normal thing to do. I knew that if you got another job in another town and had a house with a mortgage and all these things, we'd never start back up again. So it was bang, bang, bang. Graduated, bought a house, got married. So we basically had no choice but to succeed. We started that summer, you know, trying to sell product any way we could. We would assemble the covers in his trailer, um, and he had just had a baby, so he had a newborn. It just so happened we bought a house a block away from, like, an incubator industrial park with super cheap rent. September of 03, when all of our machines arrived, it was about 7.30 in the morning, and I remember showing up to the office, you know, I was 20 years old at the time, and these cranes pulled up, uh, giant cranes with these 40,000 pound machines that I didn't even know the names of. And I think it was at that point that I really sort of hit me that like there's no turning back. Going into 2008, we had amazing prospects. We had a, a vision for the company getting to $10 million within the next two years. Then the crash of 2008, 2009 happened. And what little sales we did have weren't cutting it anymore. In about six months, we watched all of the opportunities we had unravel. It was almost as if somebody just turned a faucet off. I didn't realize how dangerously close we were to dying then. It probably would have made it worse if I had known. And really, 2011 was the, was the pivoting change year. We decided that we would deal directly with consumers, and we actually began to, to produce at a level that was going to be sustainable, that was going to be viable long term, which all led to the decision in 2014 that we were going to build our own manufacturing plant, which just three years earlier had seemed pretty much impossible. When we set out to build the building, we really wanted to create something that communicated not just the fact that we needed to make a lot of product, but also that we valued the, the employees that were working here. We wanted to build a place that really made it feel like they weren't in your standard manufacturing place. We started thinking a little more creatively on how to make the lines flow better and to, to be more productive and efficient. Diamond Back Today is a tremendous success story that's making an unbelievable contribution to the community of Phillipsburg and to the reputation of Penn State. I don't think you could have planned it any better to put the people that we have together. Um, our team is unstoppable. The vision of the company is that we would create one of the best manufacturing companies in Pennsylvania that employees love to work for and customers love to buy from. I couldn't be more excited about the direction it's going and, and more excited to see what it looks like in 10 years.